Hey guys, so just to start off, I know this is a small deviation from the types of videos I usually make on here, but I thought it would give you guys somewhat of a tutorial video on how I captured some of the footage, specifically some of the wide panning shots of some of Yarnum's architecture that you saw in the last video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'd recommend you watch that one first to see all the camera shots I'm talking about here, and then come back and watch this one. I wouldn't exactly call this a deep dive into some of Bloodborne's in-game elements, but once I figured out how to do this, it was pretty entertaining to just go around Yarnum capturing some of the game's beautiful architecture. If you've seen Lance McDonald's Bloodborne videos, they were what sort of inspired me to test this out. I'm not a modder by any means, and I didn't want to have to go through jailbreaking my PS4 and risk tearing something up or sacrificing some of my game data. I would have fucked it up somehow. I didn't have that much faith in myself to do that. So instead of downloading a mod, using only in-game tools and techniques, I managed to create somewhat of a working camera that isn't completely a free cam, but considering it's all done in-game, it's the best I could come up with. You definitely aren't going to be making Dark Souls-like machinima content or anything with this, but I did get some pretty nice shots with it. It's a nice little toy to play around with if you just want to appreciate some of Bloodborne's beautiful world design and all the detail they've put into their architecture. So by now, I'm going to assume a lot of you probably guessed that it does have something to do with the monocular item due to me walking around like this, and you'd be correct. I've seen a lot of channels do this to capture some b-roll footage that's pertinent to whatever they're talking about. If you wanted to talk about the history of Old Yarnum, for instance, zooming in on one of the beast crucifixes is a pretty popular shot. But even with the UI turned off, and with the monoculars view, it still isn't technically a camera. It's still attached to your character, your hunter is kinda hugging the right side of the screen in a really awkward way, and you're still very limited as to what you can do with it. Now, I've seen a lot of players suggesting that removing articles of clothing while in the monoculars view can actually help cut down on the amount of space your hunter takes up. Uh, just gonna save you some time, that doesn't work. But something else I discovered was that you can actually use gestures while in the monoculars view. So let's take the skyline here in the Cathedral Ward, for example, where you first find this item. What I like to do is preemptively just kind of line up a shot that I think will look good, and then use the sit down gesture, which completely removes your hunter from the monoculars view. If you'd like to add a slight directional pan to your shot, simply go into your game settings and turn this sensitivity here all the way to zero. And this takes a bit of practice, but I've noticed that slightly tilting your right analog stick in one direction actually does a pretty nice job at panning around shots and making them look more cinematic. From there, once you get the shot you want, you can kinda toy around and experiment with other locations you personally think would make for a really cinematic shot. One of my favorite filming locations is Yahar Ghoul during the Blood Moon phase. It's probably one of my favorite areas to shoot, just because you get the chance to see all of the amygdala creatures really, really up close. And all the buildings and all the weird creatures roaming around, it just, it just makes for a really cinematic environment, in my opinion. There's also the lake, just behind the Bergenworth College, I think that's another great shot. And you can even get some really up-close shots of enemies, and even non-aggressive bosses like Rom, Abritus, or the Orphan at the end of the Old Hunters DLC. 
Now, since the monocular is used for zooming in and viewing details up close, it also has an extremely low field of view, so if you're interested in capturing some wider angled shots of Yarnum, instead of using the monocular, you'll need to use this second option. When capturing cinematic shots for the creepy locations video, I would sometimes run into problems where I wanted to capture a wide shot that really kind of got the whole environment in frame, but you unfortunately can't really control the FOV of the monocular. I ran into this issue when I would try to capture environments like the Tomb of Odin, for example, when you fought Father Gascoigne, and as soon as I would use the monocular, the camera would just zoom way in and the shot would no longer be a wide angle, as most of the details I wanted to capture ended up getting lost in the zoom. So this isn't as effective of a trick as the monocular, but it's another thing that can be used for just really specific shots in my opinion. Basically what I would do is find a really huge wall that I could position my character in front of. Bloodborne's third-person camera tends to freak out a little if you're in a really enclosed area, and that's true for, I guess, just about any Souls game. And that's largely because the camera in Bloodborne is actually a physical object that interacts with other in-game geometry. So what you can do here is press your camera up against a wall, which sort of gives you this angle here, it's a really up close and personal shot of your hunter character, and then once again, once you've got the hunter close enough to you, use the sit down gesture to remove the hunter from view, and presto, a working camera without the monocular. I would advise positioning yourself against a pretty decent sized area, because sometimes the object that you're using for this can kind of fuck over your shot. If you're slowly sliding the analog stick across for a pan shot, and the object's hitbox isn't completely flat, or it's really small, then sometimes the camera can actually slip off of the object you're against and just kind of ruin the shot completely. I think that's just about all the advice I have for you on this video. I know it's not a viable alternative to a legitimate free cam mod, but I also know how hesitant and how risky it can be to play around with hardware and jailbreak your system if you aren't completely 100% sure what you're doing. So I thought I would share this bit of insight with you in case you felt curious as to how I made the last video, or in case you might want to make a few short films or lore videos of your own without needing to mod anything. We have pretty much reached the end of the video at this point, but I'll close this out with a couple more minutes of some of my favorite cinematic shots I was able to capture using these two techniques. Thanks for tuning into The Forge, and I will see you next time. Take it easy.